Hello again, friends and franchise mavens. Last week, we started off with chapter two, and we went over choosing the right franchise, the seven mistakes of franchising. This week, we are going to go over the types of franchises. There are many different types of franchises to get into. One of the things that I will send you to begin with is our franchise business matrix. You can review that yourself as well at franchisemaven.com and look at the business matrix there. Within that business matrix, we have four basic categories. Quadrant A is your simple retail business, uh, where hourly, regular hourly employees, easy to train, easy to find. Uh, quadrant B is more sophisticated type of retail business, where uh, your employees have specific skill sets that they're going to be working with. Uh, quadrant C, business to consumer type franchises. Quadrant D, the business to business type franchises. Uh, so as you look through those, what, what we're looking for for you to do is kind of get a feel for the different types of franchise businesses that are out there for you. And really, where do you see yourself? Uh, where are you more comfortable with? So with Quadrant A, the simple retail business, people need it and come to you. Uh, this includes your basic restaurants, uh, hair salons, fitness franchises, that sort of thing. Simple, easy business uh, to get into and to operate. Uh, Quadrant B is the more sophisticated retail business. You provide a skilled service that people may need. So we're going to looking at something where you're going to have more skilled employees that have a certain background. Uh, things like automotive, um, urgent care, weight loss clinics. Some of the things where some people may need a certification to get into on those. Uh, things that the general public needs every day, but the employees require a little more of a licensing and background on that one. So it just depends on really the uh, the types of people you want to be working with uh, on that one. And everybody's different in that respect as far as the people I've worked with in the past. Uh, the pros to Quadrant A and B are they're easy, easily scalable. Uh, when you're looking at a brick and mortar type business, if you own one, you can open another one. Pretty easy there. If you can run two, you could probably run 10. Uh, I have one person that is picking, uh, when I wrote my book, uh, he had had his 50th salon that he'd opened up. I think he's up to about 80 now or so. But he started with the 28 hair salons, and he's looking to get to 100. Every 10 salons, what he does is he just puts a manager in place, and therefore he just manages the managers on that one. Um, the cons on that are they can be more of an investment. Brick and mortar locations carry build out and fixed costs on that. Uh, there are going to be a lot of people that you need, generally speaking, not always with that one, but generally speaking, you need a few more people. Uh, and if you get into more of the simple retail business, and I was in the simple retail business as a restaurant manager uh, many, many years ago, you're going to be doing a lot of hiring on a regular basis. That was just something I just did as part of my daily activities is always looking for people. Your manager will be doing that for you because you generally don't uh, run these things unless you want to, and you can. Uh, but most of the time, your manager is going to be doing it on there. Um, in Quadrant C and D, we're looking at service type businesses. So with service type businesses, your clients don't necessarily know you exist until they need you. With brick and mortar, it's pretty simple. You build it and they will come. It's a general theme on that one. But with the service industry, your clients don't necessarily know you exist until they need you, which means you need a great franchise system to drive those people to you when the need arises. So business to consumers, elder care, child care, property services. Uh, you don't need a storefront. Small office, work from home on that one. Uh, quadrant D, business to business, managing your back, back office, uh, and that's somebody else's front office, as, as that goes. Anything a business needs, there is probably a franchise for that. A lot of these businesses don't have name recognition. You most likely not have heard of them. Uh, the Belfort Group does restoration services on that. Uh, they, pro I think they did about half the cleanup for Katrina way back, way back when, and they still do it for any of the major disasters. Uh, the Belfort Group runs 1-800-WATER DAMAGE. You may not have ever heard of them. Hopefully, hopefully you've never heard of them because if you heard of them, you probably had some sort of damage that you need fixed. Hopefully you've not heard of them on that one. Uh, but they're huge. They're huge. Uh, Paul Davis Restoration is probably one of the biggest restoration franchises throughout the United States. They do just outstanding work. Guys, probably not one a handful of territories left for them in the United States. They've got it all, all booked up on that. So you... You might not have heard of them unless you needed them. But when you're looking at the service industry, you want a great franchise system that's going to drive people to you when that need arises. Things to look for is like what kind of a call service do they have on their call centers that they have there. 
Uh, what are they going to, do they, can they do a bid on the spot? Do they select a calendar? Those are the sort of things you look for uh, when you're looking at the different categories on that. Uh, pros and cons of the service industry, it takes less capital to get them started. You may be providing most of the labor initially, but you don't have to go on that one. You can hire people to do that for you. It's not as capital intensive to scale this up on that one. Generally speaking, probably 150,000, give or take 200,000, 100,000, just depending on if you get a small office or uh, work from home or your manager works from home in that case. Um, the cons, you're going to be the one out there selling yourself. Now, this isn't, you know, selling ice from the Eskimo or anything like that. These people have reached out to you. You've got a great franchise system. The need arose. Your clients reached out to you and said, I've got a problem. I need you to solve it. You're going to be the one going out there to solve that problem for them. So you're not trying to sell them anything that they don't know that they need yet. They know that they need it. They want it. They want you to show up. They want you to show up on time. And they want you to help them solve their problem. So that is your role or hire a manager to do that if you don't necessarily want to do that yourself on the sales part. One of the things uh, I'll be asking you is, where do you see yourself in those in those different categories and quadrants on there? Some people have specific areas in mind. Others are open. We'll go over all that together. Uh, so again, when you're looking to do a franchise, take advantage of the local score team, S-C-O-R-E, in your area. Those are a lot of business people that have been in your area for a while and ask them, you know, uh, when we're looking to do franchises, how they feel about it. Uh, they will help you out. They helped me out when I was looking to do franchising as well on there as i was going through and looking at different franchises the franchise i got a call from finally got a call from a franchise consultant i had no idea that there were franchise consultants out there and now i am one uh, there's a lot of people that don't know a franchise what a franchise consultant is or that they exist and don't know what they do i actually threw all my clicking around when i you know left my job uh and i got lots of phone calls from lots of different franchises but i finally got a couple of franchise consultants out there uh and the first thing they told me was to put everything on hold for a minute. That was that was kind of funny because I was working with a lot of different franchises. And they started asking me, uh, you know, what am I looking to accomplish? What am I looking at for an investment? Am I looking for a purpose in life, uh, an investment, or just a purpose in life? You know, you got to think about the things that, that you want. Uh, how much money do you really want to make? How much time do you want to put into it? How much money do you want to put into it? So... Give a franchise consultant a call, hopefully me, if they're looking into franchising. Uh, but there's many, many of us out there on that. Uh, we're good at what we do. When we put you in front of franchise, it's going to be the right franchise. I talk with franchises all the time about who they are looking for that will make a successful franchisee in their system. So when I talk to you, I got to find out from you, what are you looking for in a franchise? And then I do that matchup. So when I bring franchises to you, I already know that they're looking for people like you uh, to be successful. And those you have similar people that are like you in that business, probably that are that are being successful on that as well. So uh, look for a franchise consultant. Keep in mind that franchise consultants don't charge anything. Uh, the franchise or pay us a referral fee if you decide to invest in one of the franchises we introduce you to on that Uh they can't charge it. The franchises can't charge you anymore if you use a franchise consultant. That's by law. Uh, franchises like using franchise consultants because we do the preliminary work up front. We do the filtering up front. So we know what the franchises are looking for as far as background of people that are going to be successful in their system. Uh, not only, as we talked about before, where have you been, where are you at now, but they're looking at your financials as well, making sure that you're financially capable of running that franchise. We do not want you running out of money and failing. That would not be a good thing for you, definitely, and not for the franchisors either on that one. That looks bad because we'll see failures when we look at the franchise disclosure documents. We'll see the number of people who started the franchise and are no longer running it uh, and the number of people that are running the franchise currently. So really easy math to get a success rate out there on that one. Uh, for me, when I finally got a hold of my uh, franchise consultants, we found a telecommunications consulting franchise. That was a great fit for me. I got to work from home. I go, went out and visited with my clients on a regular basis. Uh, I could work any kind of schedule that I wanted to. I found cost savings for them in the telecommunications world, which was great. I got to talk to a lot of wonderful, interesting people, a lot of great business owners. Uh, and I did that telecommunications franchise for a couple of years. 
Uh, ultimately, though, I chose the path of a franchise consultant. Uh, so while we're going through this, we are going to help you understand the business, the business model, the opportunity. Uh, we're going to put you on the phone with the franchise development people rather than just the sales folks on there, put you directly into the franchise development, not the franchise sales people. So we bypass some folks along the way. And we're also going to put you on the phone with franchisees. We're going to make certain that when you get on the phone, that you have a list of questions in your hands for both the franchise or the franchisees. And I provide those for you as well. I know you probably have a list of your own on that one as well. Um, so yeah, that's one thing that I didn't know was what do I ask them? You know, what are they looking for? So a list of questions is always good. Uh, as you go through my list of questions that I have for you for both of them, you'll have start thinking of your own. You'll have a lot of your own on that as well. Uh, in-depth questions for both the franchise or the franchisees. So that's what we did with Paul as well, as I talked about Paul last week. I made certain that Paul understood the business. We, uh, he was the one who was looking at IT, finally got into, uh, finally got him into an automotive franchise because we looked at his background. And so, believe it or not, he's no longer an IT professional. He's now running a mechanic shop because we found out he loved cars and he always wanted to do something with cars. So we got him in out of the IT business into an automotive service station franchise. Uh, so go over there to uh, franchisemaven.com website, uh, check out the seven mistakes. I've got those listed on there. I'll review the business matrix and also see about using a franchise consultant. Always, whenever you have questions, don't hesitate to give me a call, email, text at any time. 361-772-6401 or greg at franchisemaven.com. Maven is M-A-V as in Victor, E-N. Next week, we're going to go over Chapter 3, The Greatest Plan for Building Wealth. In the meantime, everybody have a great day.